So if you're looking or you're interested in film photography, 35mm is the format of film that I would recommend when you're starting out. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on what to do when you're starting out shooting 35mm film for the first time. So as you can see, um, I've moved house. I'm back in London now hence the different backdrop and bedroom for my second year of university. And I'm using this little lav mic now, which is why the audio probably sounds much worse. So I'm sorry for that. So the first thing you're gonna have to do to shoot 35 mil is obviously pick up a camera. I would advise something like a Pentax ME Super or an Olympus OM-1 or a Canon AE-1. They're three pretty good cameras if you're starting off and you should be able to pick either of them up for around hundred pounds, um, depending on what lenses you use and what accessories come with it. I'd advise picking it up in real life, in a shop. Obviously this is a bit harder now due to the current virus situation, but I would pick one up in real life just so you can hold it, test it out, make sure it's all working and then take it back if it doesn't. That way you can take it back if the camera isn't fully functional. So what you have to remember with film photography is the body of the camera doesn't really matter that much because it's all about the lens and the film. The body of the camera won't really do much apart from stuff like multiple exposure and different shutter speeds. I wouldn't stress about the body too much, but I would look at the assortment of lenses for that body. Lenses are where you're gonna want to spend all your cash because they will ultimately alter the picture the most. And then the actual film you're shooting is the second biggest factor in what your pictures will turn out like. There are so many cameras I can recommend and I'm sure there are many videos out there better than this one telling you which camera to buy. I started with a Pentax ME Super and to this day it's still one of my favourite cameras to use. I just think it's brilliant, it was reliable and it came with a really nice 50mm f1.7 which I had great fun using, nice and sharp and the whole camera was very compact which is another factor you might want to think about when you're picking one. So the second thing you're going to want to do is pick the film. So first of all, you're going to want to buy a roll of film just to test your camera out. And I would advise picking up some out of date film just to check that it actually works. And even then, just your first couple of rolls, I'd still suggest out of date film just because you're getting used to the camera. Maybe you're new to photography and you still have to work out how all the settings work and your camera actually works. I'd advise getting some out of date film. You should be able to find some on eBay or at your local camera shop. So to shoot out of date film right, you just have to give it a bit more light than it says. Um, so if it's a 400 speed film and it's 10 years out of date, you're going to want to rate it as if it were a 200 speed film to give it that one extra stop of light per 10 years. Even though the film is technically out of date, your pictures will still turn out nice. You can trust me, I still shoot out of date film all the time, even in medium format through my Pentax. Um, you'll be all right. You just have to give it that bit more light and even if it's a couple years out of date, there's nothing to worry about. I've shot 30 plus years out of date film. You just have to overexpose it, use that 10 years per stop of light rule and you'll be fine. You might just notice some color shifts and it might be a bit grainier, but the pictures will still turn out good. Something like Fuji C200 is a great film to start with. It's cheap, it has great colors. And then when you get a bit more confident, some nicer films like Portra 400 or Fuji 400H. Other more premium films, um, obviously there's so many film stocks out there. Portra 400 is my go-to just because I'm so used to it. I know how it works. I know what the dynamic range is like on it and I'm just confident with shooting that. And that's something I'd advise sticking to a film, learning it inside out. And then you can really visualize how the picture is gonna come out from exposing the picture to scanning it and then editing it, you will know exactly what it will turn out like. And this just comes down to practice and shooting a roll of film consistently. Something I'd advise if you're getting serious about your photography. So number three is finding a good lab to develop and scan your film. So assuming you aren't scanning your first roll of film yourself, you're going to want to take this exposed roll to a film lab 
to get it developed and scanned. So I would ask around, um, maybe message some people on Instagram, ask them if they're in your city where they get their photos developed. And then when you're at the lab, you can ask them about the different scanners, the different resolutions of scans that they will give you. It's so worth it asking the lab what scanners they use. For example, my lab back in Brighton, they did low res, mid res, high res scans and they did low res and mid res on one worst scanner. And then their high res scans were done on a Fuji scanner with great colors and great sharpness. And I just asked, can I get mid res done on the Fuji scanner? And they said that was fine. And they did that free of charge. So it is just worth asking for things like that. Once you work your way around and ask around, there might be better scanners for you to use that come free of charge. It's just worth asking basically, because that's what happened to me and I got much better colors and sharpness for the same price. So there are three tips from me on how to shoot your first roll of film. Um, there'll be videos on YouTube on how to load it and stuff. I just thought I'd give a little insight in what happened to me and just some tips on your journey shooting in this format. I still shoot 35 mil, even though I mainly shoot on my 6.7 on medium format. I still shoot a lot of 35 mil. It's a great format, you'll get 36 photos in a roll, which I think is great compared to 10 on my Pentax on medium format. So I hope this video helped you out. Leave a comment below if you've got any questions. Give me a like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. Thank you for watching. Cheers.